Hello, and welcome to another edition of Mindful Social. You know, we hear it every day, articles, blog posts, news stories, and complaints over coffee about how social media is taking over our lives and full of negativity. Yeah, that's kind of true in some cases. So why do we crave social media so much? Maybe it's a sense of community, a sense of belonging. Maybe in some ways it's bringing us together and removing some of that loneliness that we feel because our personal communities are not as rich as we think they should be. Of course, it could be that social media sets an unrealistic expectation of the world. Not so many people share their dark days or their struggles. No, we tend to share vacations, the most amazing meals, the highlights of our life reel. Okay, so social media can be an immersive, all-consuming obsession. But whose fault is that? Social media is a tool, and we can't blame the tool. It's our responsibility to use the tools wisely, to exercise self-control and not get all FOMO every time a new network pops up. Let's just put the fire Festival out there as an example where FOMO gets you. This doesn't mean we should abandon social media. It has great value to us as individuals, as business, and as a society. Let's consider a mindful approach to how we can use it. Even if it's your job, as it is for me, you don't have to be on all the time. Set times of the day you'll open your networks and check them. If that's too rigid for you, fine. Set time limits on how long you'll be on and set a timer. It can be hard at first, but with practice, you'll find yourself more present in what you're doing when you're on as well as when you're off. You don't have to be everywhere. Most people try all the social networks and then settle on just a few that actually work for them, that they actually use. Sure, I sign up and play with the toys, but in reality, you'll find mostly I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. I scan a few other networks on a weekly basis, but I don't live there. Some are great fits for my clients, but not for me personally. And that's okay. I can use them, use them for work, and move on. The other thing is you don't have to like everyone. One of the beauties of many of the modern social networks is that we can follow, connect, or like whoever we want to. If there are trolls or hate speech on your social networks, you need only unfollow, block, or in some cases, report the individual. You don't have to absorb the negativity at all. Simply turn it off. I'll tell you on my networks, I participate in some polarizing dialogue. Not everybody agrees with me and that's okay. I can choose to have a conversation or not. It's my network. If they want to go on and on about how global warming is bogus, for example, I'm not likely to be able to dissuade them from their truth by arguing with them. So I just don't. It doesn't mean I don't talk about it or put my views forward, but I can choose not to get into a fruitless discussion. Trolls are trolls. They're going to be cantankerous and they're going to be provocative. Just don't rise to the bait and they'll move on. You can also set alerts. I set alerts for all of my own accounts as well as those of my clients. I don't automatically check them though. Once every hour or two, I pick up my phone, scan alerts, and see if anything needs attention. If it doesn't, I can leave it until later. In almost all cases, it's not the end of the world if you don't respond immediately and take a little time to put forth a mindful response. And when you're on, be on. I participate in Twitter chats and other live events where I need to respond quickly. In that case, I'm not listening to a webinar, a podcast, watching TV, or checking my email. I'm being fully present when I'm on social media, and that allows me to be more responsive and my posts are truer to me. Because I'm all in. Well, except the typos. I have kind of a lot of typos. When you're not on, be truly where you are. How many life events have you missed because you were on your mobile device? home runs at Little League, a beautiful sunset, a conversation with a cherished friend, a really great meal. Being present 100%, all in, is one of the true joys of life. We see the nuances and the tiny moments of beauty that last only a moment. We're missing living if we're not there. 
I was, may still be addicted to taking somewhat lousy photos of my meals when I cook or eat out, and then I share them on my social networks. I've been slowly weaning myself off this annoying habit. How rude is it to be sitting at the table with a glorious meal and family and friends and then spend all the time on my phone? As a step down, I take a quick snapshot and put my phone down until an appropriate time. Someday I may actually find it unnecessary to do it at all. That one's going to take me a little more time. I'm a foodie. I can't help it. But bottom line, it's us, you and me, who are responsible for how much time we spend on social media and who we give our attention to. It's a choice we make for whatever reason. If we don't like what we see in a particular network or from a particular connection, we don't have to be there. Thanks for listening to Mindful Social. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoy the show, please feel free to give it a like on whatever podcasting network you're listening. Subscribe so you don't miss the guests and the stories to come. Thank you.